All right, so in this example, they want us to graph. So what I asked you guys to do in your, just like your exponential homework, was to sketch the graph of the original and then the transformation and to provide me a point. It's two log. Okay. So first of all, let's just graph what the normal logarithmic graph looks like. It crosses at 0, 1. And just looks something like this. Oh, I'm sorry, it crosses at 1, 0. Correct? Yes? OK. Uh, the next thing. Now, what I typically prefer to do is to rewrite this as log of negative x plus 3 minus 1. OK? So now, what you guys can see is my graph has now been so remember, A, that's just going to be your vertical stretching and compressing of the graph. That's actually not going to, um, that's actually not going to affect uh, like the, the intercept. But what that is going to do is that's just going to kind of stretch the graph in on there. Um, you guys could also look at, we have this negative. Or remember, the only thing, though, that when that A is negative is that it's going to um, reflect about the x-axis. But since that's positive, we don't need to do that. And um, then also we have the plus 3, which is going to be shifting the graph, uh, or shifting the graph to the left. We have this negative x, which is going to reflect it about the y-axis. And, and then we have the minus 1. Okay. Now, um, where a lot of times this gets tricky is when you have a negative, um, when you have a negative inside of this. What we can do is again rewrite this one more time. When you just have one negative, that's not really a big deal. But if you factor that out, And you can see that's actually being multiplied. That negative is actually being multiplied, but that's actually shifting it over to the right, and so you're actually not actually shifting it to the left. And that's why I just wanted to make sure if I remembered it correctly. If you guys go ahead and plug that into your calculator, you guys can see that that gets verified in the graph. It's actually being shifted. It's actually going right because you, what you do is you, if you factor that negative, you're really multiplying the inside by a negative. It's not just the x. So therefore, you'd want to factor that out. And now you can see that the graph is being shifted. Just put it on my desk. So it's being reflected, telling you to shift it to the right three. One, two, three. And then it's going down one. So my new point on my graph, Roman, that I have is one, two, three, four, down negative one. Um, it's also important to understand that my asymptote is now going to be 1 over from here. OK, because remember, that was my x-intercept. So my asymptote is going to be 1 over. Since this got reflected, um, it's going to be 1 over to the right. And so my graph would look something like this. OK. This kind of gets a little. A little bit confusing. I, I mean, I, I doubt you guys are going to have something like that um, as far as negative. Usually, a lot of times when I'm dealing with a negative, um, 